two weekly Q and A's. We took a couple weeks off for the holidays. It's always good, recharge and spend time with family. And we're gonna dive right in to grocery savings tonight because that's where most everybody's brains are, right? Uh, you don't even wanna think about the bill that's coming from Christmas. Hopefully it's not too bad. Hopefully you guys stayed on budget pretty well, but we all realize that we've gotta get groceries under control and just general household spending. So I wanna hit the bare bones basics and just some key areas where you could be hopefully cutting your budget and saving a little bit more tonight. If you've got questions though on specific items, please ask, always glad to help with specific questions. So leave those questions in the comments and I will try to answer them. Right now I'm flying solo. My husband's been up at church fixing something and he didn't come home uh, before 8.30. So hopefully by the end I won't be flying solo, but for now, uh, if I miss your question, ask it again um, so that hopefully I will catch it. It's hard to see all the comments go by and to uh, go through everything I have on my little handy dandy dry erase board. So um, we will dive right in. We are again gonna go through groceries today and really for the next few weeks, just focus on some basics. I'm also planning on getting some online workshops up because January is a big time for folks that really wanna deep dive into groceries. So we're gonna start that probably every other Thursday evening. I will have an online workshop and occasionally a Saturday for the next couple of months. So I will get all those dates up and hopefully be able to share them with you tomorrow. I just didn't get there today, um, but I will get them scheduled so that we can dive into workshops. I know a lot of folks have been asking lately. Um, so uh, I guess I've already got some, some first questions and hello to everyone. It's good to see you guys back uh, and familiar faces and some new faces as well. Uh, DC, I need to know what brother printer you recommend. Um, so Doreen, my favorite brother printer is really any black and white brother laser printer. So that would be the brother HL2340 or above. And they make a lot of models. Uh, the 2340 being the first one that is wireless. The 23, I think it's the 2320, 2330. I don't know that the 30 is wireless. This is going off of memory here. So just make sure you're getting the wireless model. The reason I love those black and white brother printers, you can buy off brand toner like for 20 bucks on Amazon and that toner will last you a year. Now, if you're getting this for printable coupons, I will say there's not nearly as many printable coupons as there used to be. So if you're diving back into coupons after a break, I mean, you'll want a printer occasionally, your shopping list for sure, um, but not always gonna be for coupons these days. So let's dive into that. Let's talk some basics and some savings and then I'll jump back over to some other questions too. <laughs> and, and Karen, I hear it. Karen says eggs. They were $4.55 at Aldi today. I agree. Remember Aldi, that's their loss leader, guys. That is a loss leader for Aldi, by the way. Eggs are not below $5 in any grocery store across the U.S. except in Aldi, Lidl, the stores that are hoping to get you in the door. Aldi, Lidl always use eggs and milk as their loss leaders, and it works typically, but that's still a crazy price. So uh, you may not like my idea to save on eggs there, but I got 20 chickens in the side yard, so... It is a way to save on eggs. I know it's not actually possible for everybody based on where you live, um, but we'll try to go through everything. So first off, um, I had someone email me recently, you know, what has changed over inflation, over COVID, and how I would tell you to save money on your groceries. Uh, honestly, the basics haven't changed. Our grocery stores are still running sales. Our non-grocery stores are not. It's still the same basics here of you want to focus on where you're shopping. And I wanna pick a store that has a really great sale and promotional model because I'm going to get bigger discounts. That doesn't mean that I'm going in and just getting what I need today. It means I am going in and I am buying what is on sale today. So if you're going to Publix, I don't know if any of you guys have been around this person in the store, and maybe the person in front of you, right? That's our goal, don't be this person. They're checking out and the little or the big screen in front of them literally says they saved $3 today. They, I don't even know how they managed it, managed to save nothing. They managed to avoid everything that was on sale. Our goal is the exact opposite. If it's not on sale, 
I'm not buying it. Now, we have shopped this way in our house for almost 17 years now. So everyone in my house fully understands this concept. Nobody is gonna come in and be like, mom, you forgot such and such. They know that if it's not in the bags, it wasn't on sale. However, I do get a lot of cheers of like, oh, this is back on sale. Uh, you know, so that's really where we need to get trained is that we are focused on what is on sale, not what we need. Uh, and when we shop based on what we need, so you sit down and you make a list of what you're out of, you're probably making a really great list of what is not on sale today. The odds of you being out of it and it being, it's just not going to line up. So we want to focus on what is on sale, only buying those sale items. And that's not going to be too hard once you do this for a few weeks. All of our major grocery stores run on about a six week sale cycle, meaning I'm going to go in today and I just walked Publix because today is a new grocery ad for Publix. It's not their normal day. It's just because they're still on a holiday schedule. But, you know, let's say you need coffee. Well, today, Lavazza coffee is what is buy one, get one. So you could buy six weeks of coffee. This is a, a good example of, of some times where we don't need to. In my world, I don't really have a coffee that I'm brand loyal to. My husband just likes dark roast coffee. So, okay, I'm going to get dark roast coffee, but I'm just going to get a couple. And a week from now, a different coffee will be on sale. Uh, and I'll, you know, if I needed more, I would get more. That's not always the case though. If you've got a specific product that you need or a specific brand that you love, then I want to go in, I want to say, hey, I love Lavazza coffee or however we're going to say that coffee. I'm going to get enough to last me about six weeks. It will be back on sale in about six weeks. And that is just how the grocery stores run for our big national brands every six weeks. Again, a lot of times we have other options, right? You're not going to eat the same box of cereal every morning for the next six weeks. Maybe you do, but that would just be way too much for me. I couldn't handle that. So you're really going to grab a couple boxes that are on sale this week, a couple boxes that are on sale next week, or that's what I do because there are seven of us here. Um, you get the idea. I need to follow what's on sale. Sometimes that doesn't mean that I have to buy a ton. It means that I can just grab a different brand next week. But sometimes it does. Sometimes, you know, here's another great example. A1, you want some steak sauce and you prefer A1 or Heinz 57. Well, those are on sale every six weeks. So you're going to need to grab that steak sauce. Hopefully you can get a bottle to last a little bit longer than six weeks, but you see what I'm saying? We get the gist here. So I want to buy it when it's on sale and I want to buy enough of it to last me until it is back on sale. A1, probably one bottle, but you get, you get the idea. That is the bare bones basics here. As long as I do that, I am beating the price in our big box stores. I am beating the Walmart price and the Target price on those items when I shop that buy one, get one sale in Publix, that um, mega event in Kroger, whatever your store's promotional model is, you've hopefully beat the no sale price, which is really what Walmart is, right? The always low price is really, it's not on sale. So you're gonna beat it when you follow the sale price in your grocery store. Yes, not all grocery stores are equal. So you do want to focus on the grocery store that has the best sales near you. And that is the bigger grocery store. So my sweet in-laws who have an IGA and a Dollar General, I feel for all of you folks that are in that neck of the woods, if you've got a grocery store, a big grocery store, a Publix, a Kroger, a Harris Teeter, a Lowe's Foods, if you've got one of those bigger grocery stores, you're in the South, I know I just named a bunch of Southern grocery stores, and Albertsons, uh, you, can, you can expand this past the South. Uh, if it's within 30 minutes, it's worth the drive, guys. Every grocery store that I head to is more than 30 minutes away. We live in the woods. Even the Dollar General is 15 minutes away, and there's a rare few of us that are 15 minutes from a Dollar General in this country, but we're one of them. So it is worth a drive. The savings will still cover the drive, I promise, um, versus paying those IGA prices, which are incredibly painful. 
don't do that on every single thing that you need. So you do want to focus on the right store, the right promotional model so that you can take advantage of those sales. And yes, this still holds true. I know prices are through the roof, but you're still getting the lowest possible price. I can't make, you know, 2018 show back up at Publix when you drive up to the parking lot, but I can say you are gonna get the best price that you could possibly get right now when you're following that sales cycle. Hopefully, we, you know, that makes sense. But if it doesn't, ask questions away. I am glad to clarify if I have asked any, um, uh, or I've said anything that just, just didn't make sense at all. Uh, and uh, so to jump back in, uh, Barbara is asking, what is the deal with the eggs um, and, and where are the deals? So with eggs, um, I saw someone else answer it. It is a bird flu. They've had to cull. That is basically what we do when um, you have avian flus is you have to like kill the entire herd. You don't really wait or that's not a herd flock. Uh, you don't wait and see who gets sick and who doesn't. They cull the entire flock. So we have a lot of birds that are no longer producing in the U.S. Now the plus side is that chickens, first off, they do lay a ton of eggs and you can hatch out a ton of new chickens, but it still takes about 16 weeks for a layer hen to start laying. So you're still looking at a four month lead time from the time that a flock was culled Literally, if they hatch today, a four month lead time, which is a really long time to rebuild that egg supply. That on top of inflation. So before the avian flu, we were still seeing eggs over $3 a dozen add in the avian flu and the price skyrockets. You're also dealing with an increased um, demand for eggs over holiday baking season. That's gonna taper off. So you will see the price of eggs start to drop in the next couple of weeks. This is literally like gasoline. We don't think about it, but when we're dealing with commodities like eggs and milk, it really is a commodities market, and that's even what it's called, um, because they're, they have to be produced. Um, they're not you know, just made on a factory line. They have to be produced, and they do have effects of supply and demand. So the price is uh, fluctuating constantly. Uh, and it will go down, I promise. Currently, uh, deal-wise, there's not much out there for eggs. You're gonna find, again, Aldi, Lidl, they use these as their price points to try to get people in the door, so they do offer eggs and milk below the national uh, market price, meaning that they're losing money on those products. Uh, they're okay with that. That's just been part of, that is their promotional model. It's their only promotional model is to get people in the door with eggs, milk, and bread. Um, and if they know that you're going to be loyal for those three products, then you're there and you're in their store and you're going to buy other things. Um, so if you're a big egg eater, it probably is making a separate trip to those stores to grab eggs right now. You're not going to get them on sale or much cheaper in the other stores. Okay. Um, and Sue, have I kept my grocery budget the same? Oh, you know, I was just thinking about that this morning um, because I had a feeling somebody would, would question and I will say for December, I don't always sit there and um, live by like a cash rule because you've got things like Christmas Eve and Christmas Day that are more expensive. Um, going into the new year, looking at November before the holidays started, we're probably spending about $120 a week right now where we were spending about 100 So uh, for years, we've spent 100 as our weekly grocery budget for seven people. Um, oh goodness, 10 plus years. So I did start to bump to about 120 on average uh, per week for a couple of reasons. First off, I've had kiddos playing sports for the last six months and they eat a lot more food than kiddos that are not playing sports. Um, and just in general, the prices of meat and other items getting more and more expensive. So about 120 is where we're living. And every family is different. So whether that is way higher than what you would do or it seems crazy, crazy low to you, just realize we all eat different things. We are not uh, having wine with every meal. We're not having appetizers. Tonight was tacos. Uh, and when we have tacos, it's literally tacos. There isn't a side with that. There is, here's your plate, either turn it into nachos or eat it as tacos. That's dinner. Um, so we don't do a lot of fancy meals here. Tacos is one where all of my children agreed we could eat it once a week and they would be happy. We don't, but we could. And, they, and there would be no complaints from the entire 
plan um, in our house. So that is a normal one. Um, okay, so um, to keep us going, um, we hit the basics there um, and we'll go further in depth, um, not only when I get those classes up, but also as we go through the weeks. Um, but I do wanna hit one thing. So I mentioned that I only want you to buy something when it's on sale. I don't really want you to grab items because you need them, but there are still ways to find who has the best prices on them. So here's our moment to make sure that you are using the item search that is on Southern Savers. So if you are on Southern Savers, this is always on the right-hand sidebar. If you're on the mobile site, um, this is down in the bottom. There's a little magnifying glass. This is the item search. You can literally search for exactly what you need right now and see who has the best price on it. So if you're out of peanut butter, I can search for just peanut butter. I'm not even putting in a brand there. Guys, to save the most money, I don't want to be brand loyal, right? I get that you may love Peter Pan. We don't ever see Peter Pan on sale. You should really be a Jiffy or a Skippy person. Um, but I say that in Publix has Peter Pan, um, buy one, get one right now uh, in their new ad. You'll see Jiff, you'll see Skippy, um, but even this Peter Pan, um, it depends on your store. My store was not actually priced at $4.99 today. It was priced a little bit lower. So this is my store's price at $3.13. So that brought Peter Pan to $1.56. I'll try to make that bigger for you guys. Um, but I can sit here and search across all the weekly ads. I have the item search um, specifically only showing me stores that are in my area, but you can tell it to just show you any store that we cover on the site. So you're gonna find Ingalls, you're gonna find Winn-Dixie, just anybody that has them on sale so that you have an idea of who has the best price. Now, it's also gonna show you anything that has the word peanut butter in it. Um, so maybe not everything is exactly what you wanted, but it is gonna help you find what you need right now that is on sale right now. Um, so while I don't want you to shop based on need, there are still things you have to have, or maybe you've not been doing a really great job of following sales and you're trying to get back into it, then you can kind of follow the sales and keep tabs on what is on sale that you have to have while grabbing the things that are on sale right now. And hopefully that will help a little bit too. Um, another key way to help on groceries, definitely in our house, is having a meal plan. Uh, this is gonna save you for the little things. Uh, like for example, folks wanted tacos in our world, but I didn't have any fresh tomatoes. Um, I have two options. I could buy them in the store. Um, not really loving the price of tomatoes. We actually did a can of diced tomatoes today as our tomatoes. We usually do fresh, um, but you know, we can make some changes if we don't have something on hand, but having a meal plan is gonna help you avoid quick trips for things that you forgot. It's also gonna help you stick with what you have on hand and possibly eat up what you have on hand. We have an extra freezer outside and that's a really great way to save extra and be able to stock up when it's on sale. But it's also a really bad way sometimes because you end up with things in the freezer that are long lost forgotten items. Uh, and so having a meal plan and focusing on, you know what, this week we are going to eat out of that freezer. We are going to dig and find things that I grabbed on clearance and we just sent to the freezer, like just send it off into nowhere land. It exists and you spent money on it. So using your meal plan to take care of those things. And I know we're not the only family here. Definitely if you have that outside storage space, freezer space, there are things that get forgotten. So maybe you don't give it a whole week. Maybe that just sounds stressful, but think about it even in terms of your meal plan. You know what? Thursdays. I don't have a big Thursday. Thursday is gonna be my, I stand in front of the freezer and I figure out something that is for dinner that is in that freezer. Uh, or I just do it, you know, earlier in the week is a little less stressful, but you get what I'm saying, that you work those things into your meal plan. The other thing I incredibly urge you to do in your meal plan is work in leftovers. And I, it doesn't always have to be just a leftover night. It can actually be reworking your leftovers. Uh, how many of you guys were eating like Christmas ham four times last week? We were. Uh, we had Christmas and then we had Christmas with the in-laws. So we really had a ham and we had a beef roast. And so I can't even, I, I'm pretty sure it was every night last week. That was your meat. And then I would just add a different veggie. So you get to pick, 
ham or beef. You can have what you had last night, have the other one the next night. Uh, as we tried to eat up all of that leftover meat, but you can get creative too. So that beef for us last night, it, uh, on our, on its last and final night, uh, got turned into beef stir fry, added in some stir fry veggies, added in some teriyaki seasoning. Yes, it was originally a incredible beef roast that my mother-in-law fixed, but it can be other things. We turned it into beef sandwiches with some mayo horseradish sauce and some cheddar cheese. They were delicious. You get the idea here. Ham can turn into ham and potato casserole, ham and bean soup. So I'm just giving you Christmas examples because that's where we've lived. I mean, that is the whole week between Christmas and New Year's. It's just leftover a week. Um, but that needs to be your mindset as well because that, and my kids, they were, they were totally grumpy by the end. I am not saying that everybody handled this uh, with amazing charm and grace, but all it takes is a quick reminder to them, whoa, whoa, whoa. Meat is one of the most expensive things that I can grab. And so you will not grumble and you will eat this meat. We will not throw away meat at the end of this week that didn't get eaten. Um, so it's okay to reset people's priorities and give them a new focus. Like, hey, 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 uh, I don't want to hear it. This is what you're eating for dinner. You can get creative if you need to, but catch up on it. You know, whatever. <laughs> if your kids, that's uh, little kids in our house. Ketchup makes everything better. Um, but you get the idea. I love turning them into other meals. That is an easy way to shut down the naysayers on leftovers. So get creative if you need to, but work that into your meal plan. Long story short there, because throwing that away is just literally throwing away money. And that's the mindset that everybody in the family needs to have. Uh, I get a little, um, hardcore on that as well with my kids. I have one kiddo, a very sweet 14 year old who loves milk, but she will pour herself an entire glass of milk at eight o'clock at night and then walk away from it. Well, I will take that glass of milk and stick it in the fridge and she will find that waiting for her in the morning. Um, and every time that she does it, I will remind her that milk costs more than gasoline most times. So you know, just for her to realize we're not going to fill up an entire glass of milk and walk away from it. We have to have that mentality. So I'm picking on my kids. I do the same thing too, not on milk, but on other things. Um, so we just need to all be on the same page with not wasting food because it is throwing away money, especially with the price of food right now. Um, okay. I'll stop being your grandmother, um, and your mom there. You can, you can be, uh, in charge of your own leftovers. I know. Um, but I at least said it, you know, like the elephant in the room kind of, Oh, I love it. And Randa said she made tacos with the last. Um, so it, it's a, the, tacos is also a really great a leftover meal. Um, okay. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, I'm reading through the questions, trying to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Um, so Deb, what order should I plan before shopping? Should I look at the sales, the coupons, Ibotta, et cetera? That's a really great question, Deb. So if you're sitting here and you're pondering, okay, where do I start? Do I look at what coupons I have? Do I look at what the sales are? I always recommend starting with the sale. I want you to think about the coupons as being kind of icing on the cake. Because if I can go in and I can buy an item at least 40% off, that's our goal, 40% off. So that could be your buy, your buy one, get one deal in some grocery stores. That can be your mega event item where it's already on sale and then they take a little bit more off of it with that extra dollar off or whatever the promotion is for Kroger that week. So I want 40% off. Well, then when you think about it, you know, that 50 cent coupon, that $1 Ibotta, that's icing on the cake, but I already saved 40 or more, maybe 50% by shopping the sale. And that really is the bulk of your savings because the sale right there just saved you two, three, maybe even more depending on the item off of that item compared to the 50 cent Ibotta or the $1 Ibotta. Even better to pair the Ibotta with the sale. Um, so I would always point you in, in the focusing on the sale first and then the coupon are there offers in our mobile apps that kind of, who cares if it's on sale? Uh, this is a really, definitely, there are definitely offers that might completely change your mind. 
Um, so, you know, to look at that, and we're not gonna fully talk mobile apps tonight, but to look at that for just a second. So this is my Ibotta um, app, and I have it in dark mode, so yours may not look this way, but it's the same app. Um, you can definitely go through this scrolling through for every single item. That's a lot of work. If you're using the lists that are on Southern Savers, I've tried really hard to make sure that I already have all these Ibotta offers already matched in with the sales that are running. So any offer that we know of is going to be right there for you to be able to use that offer um, with the sales. So just to show you what I mean by that, like this is the Publix list right now. And here's our buy one, get one deals. We got General Mills and Kellogg's and all the offers that we know whether that's mobile apps, whether that's insert coupons, that's the focus, right? So use those lists that are on Southern Savers, they're free uh, to kind of get an idea of what's on sale, get an idea of the coupons. You can definitely go hunting and see if I missed something or something new came out since the ad was written uh, or typed up. Um, but if you wanna focus on mobile apps too, Ibotta is probably your best option. There are hundreds of offers in there. And there's two particular areas that I would look at before you head to the store. You can't, honestly, every single week to sit here and scroll through Ibotta before you went grocery shopping. It's not something you're gonna do. It's it maybe for a week or two, but you're gonna give up because there's so many offers there. So don't bother with that. Instead, I'm gonna show you with my pointer here, uh, right here at the very top, um, this moves and it's really, the categories. And so what I recommend is that you get in the habit of looking in two categories if you want to before you go to the store to try to keep tabs on those particular items. It's a lot less to keep track of. So those two categories are what's hot and best value. And they're right next to each other. So what's hot and then best value. And that's again up here in that top slider bar. Um, so what's hot is telling you who they're the most used offers. Typically, those are going to line up with offers that do work out to be really great prices or the items are on sale, which is great. Now, there are some exceptions and today is one of those exceptions. So the what's hot doesn't necessarily line up with sales on the first day of the sale because really it's kind of what's hot yesterday. Uh, it's based on their data, right? And today people have gone shopping, maybe they haven't submitted all their receipts, you just need to give the sale a couple days for what's hot to actually reflect sale items. Um, there are still some great offers here, like this guy is buy one, get one. Um, apple pie stuffed oat bites. This is not on sale. This brand is actually never on sale. But when you grab two of them, you're going to get back $4.99, which is the price of one of them. So I don't even need a sale for that, right? I've made my own buy one, get one. Um, so what's hot? you'll find those. And then the next column, you're gonna see some overlap is best value. And these are literally the highest value offers. A lot of times it does factor in what the going price is for that item. So it'll know, hey, this item normally costs two bucks and this is a $2 coupon. That's a best value. So it's not necessarily truly a in order of the amount that you're saving. It's more in a like a ratio to the product's price. Um, but it's still going to be helpful for you as you go hunting to find those top offers. So what's hot and best value. Um, the for you is usually also going to show you what you've purchased in the past. Um, now here's another example since we're in Publix for a second. This offer is um, good at Publix, but there you'll see it in your app under other stores as well. Uh, this is a brand new variety of pasta that has come out. The Publix everyday price on this pasta is $2.59 in my store. Well, they're offering you $2 back. So no, there are moments where I don't need to wait for a sale. It makes the box of pasta 59 cents. That's a great price. Could it go on sale while you still have the offer and be a better price? Yes. And that's kind of the risk you have to take. Whether you decide to wait for the sale or use the offer, Either way, you still got a really great price. Um, so I wouldn't be super concerned. I'm just, you know, laying it out there in kind of uh, all aspects of it. I would go ahead and use it if I were you though, while it's still there. Usually the higher the offer, um, the faster they go away because they reach their max and people have redeemed a bunch of them. They don't have any more budget. They're not gonna last forever. Okay. Um, 
hopefully we're hitting some uh, some things here that are just, you know, good take home reminders for you. Um, there's another one in terms of just general grocery savings that again, I kind of feel like you know, I'm your mom, but as prices get higher and higher, you are going to need to reevaluate for yourself and for the rest of the family, what is a need versus what is a want. Uh, and hands down in our world to live on our budget, that's soda gone. Juice has been gone for a couple of years. My kids actually, one of them said this week, mama, this juice is on sale. Uh, juice hasn't been on sale in, in years. And I was like, well, actually it has, but you just haven't been in the store with me <laughs> and I don't buy it anymore. But I love that her mindset was that it wasn't on sale. Not that I was no longer purchasing it for her. So it was very sweet of her to, uh, not lay the blame at my feet, but the blame is on my feet. I'm not purchasing it. Juice isn't required. Drink water, uh, drink milk if you want to. Milk is expensive, but it's at least providing you with calcium and vitamin D, um, more than juice is. So those were some big things that went in our book. Uh, snacks decreased at least. I know you can't fully take some things away. Your kids come home from school and the first thing they do is hit the snacks, um, but focusing on snacks that are going to be high protein, high fiber to where we're not going to eat all afternoon. Uh, also focusing on limiting them, making them realize you're done. This is not just an open pantry that you can just munch out of for hours. You're done. Um, a, a key way to do that with kids, by the way, is that you don't keep all the snacks in the pantry. Uh, maybe you have a bin that lives in your closet of extra snacks. And when what's in the pantry runs out, if it runs out too fast and you can set that in your mind, what, you know, how long you think something should last, you don't pull out the new stuff. Um, don't let them know where the stash is, but that is one way to limit the snacks if you need to. And we can all use that in our lives, right? Adults too, not just kids. Um, but those are not needed items. In my book, I feed you three meals a day. And beyond those three meals, the snacks, that's another icing on the cake kind of moment. It's not required. You can wait until the next meal. Uh, and these are getting to be expensive items that could be cut from your budget as well. Uh, another one is meat. I know meat is expensive. So I encourage you to look at meals that the meat is not served as literally a serving of meat. So casseroles, there's a reason why your grandparents cooked certain things, they're cheaper. Casseroles are, are so much cheaper per serving because the meat is separated. And in general, each person isn't getting six or four ounces of meat in their hunk of casserole. They're getting rice or potatoes or whatever the filler is to that casserole that's generally cheaper than the meat that is in the casserole. They're still getting some meat, they're just not getting as much. And in reality, do we need as much meat as we usually put on our plates if we serve a chicken breast to the family? No, we don't. Um, th so that's another one too. In our world, I, I have five kids. I don't cook seven chicken breasts. If we were to do chicken breast or if we were to do steaks, I don't cook seven steaks. Uh, steaks is a rare occasion around here. What we do instead is usually cook two, maybe three if I'm going steaks. I might cook four if I was going chicken breast. It depends on the size of the chicken breast. But I, I don't even serve my husband with an entire steak. Instead, they come in off the grill uh, and they get sliced, thin sliced. And so everybody gets a, a stack of thin sliced steak, but it goes so much further than handing somebody a hunk of steak on their plate or an entire chicken breast. You get slices um, or you, you know, pre-cut for the kids. And really we started this when the kids were little, but we've kept it going because it stretches that meat even further. Uh, my kids are not starving. No one in my family went to bed hungry tonight, but this is just an easy way to stretch your meat to serve more people by really taking it out of what you feel like is a serving because honestly, it's way more than a serving. Um, you can look up the dietary regulations on that one and you'll see like, oh, a serving of chicken is really half of what I've normally been giving myself. So this is gonna help you as well in that, but it's a huge way to save on 
just meat costs to work on how you present the meat on a plate. Because it's not even about finding a deal. It's about literally how you're serving your food, but it is a huge way to save some more. Um, uh, okay, so let me uh, jump back to some questions. I know I keep going on my little topics tonight. Sorry, I'm not normally uh, as much of, I, if these are like soap boxes to you, if I'm, if I'm rubbing you raw with some uh, things you don't want to hear, uh, I don't always try to attack you, I promise. Um, okay, uh, so to hit some questions, do I clip the Ibotta item just when I'm going to buy it That uh, on that particular item? Yes, Kathy, I do. So let me jump back over and show you that. Uh, and just to explain, um, I could clip this item right now. I was in Publix today, um, but I was trying to hurry and I actually didn't grab very much at all. If I was in Publix, that's usually when I would load the item. The reason um, that I don't just load it now while I'm sitting here talking to you, I mean, I, I can, but it doesn't do anything in Ibotta. It does not save this offer for me. I do have to load it before I buy it, but I, and I'll do that. So now it's got a little check mark next to it where this circle just turned blue right there. Um, but... That doesn't mean that when I get to Publix next week, if that's the next time I go back, that this offer will still be there. Just because I loaded it does not save it for me personally. So I don't really go through and load a ton. You'll see a few that have check marks. This Hope Hummus I did buy today. I actually have my receipt and I still need to take a picture of it. Um, Hope Hummus is buy one, get one right now. There's a $1 off Ibotta on it. So I did load that one today in the store. Um, but most of these I will load just when I purchase them because really if I just sat here at home, just load and offers, I'm really wasting my time. Uh, half of them could be gone next week. So a lot of them will still be there, but not everything. I'm not saving them. Um, so it's easier to just deal with them as I need them. Okay. Um, I uh, Let's see. So Mei Hing, you had Purcell on your weekend evic at Harris Teeter. You saw an Ibotta offer, tried to get it, but, the, um, but it was out. Um, oh, and I, exactly. So May Hing's even kind of commenting on this. So you tried to get it. The parcel was out in your store. You're hoping that you can use your rain check before the Ibotta offer goes away. That's a key example of not necessarily needing to load every Ibotta offer because A, I may not find it in the store, but it could also be gone when you did find it back in the store. Now, parcel is on sale in other stores. It may not be as cheap as it was in your evic May Hing but um, maybe you'll find it uh, where you could kind of pair in that offer with it if you wanted to. Okay. Um, oh, and Mei Hing, I do not judge you. Buying turkeys in November uh, and sticking them in the freezer, you should do that. If you love turkey that much, as long as you remember they're there, um, you know, don't lose them to the long lost world of the freezer. That is the best time to buy turkey and to, to tuck it away because it's not coming back on sale until next November. <laughs> Just don't forget that they're there. Um, okay. Um, I, so, okay. I think I've caught everybody's questions as we go through. Um, so a few more things. One thing I was pondering, you know, that I would maybe change advice on how I have taught saving money versus what I am doing now. Uh, and one of those areas is uh, probably, you know, five years ago, I would have said, hey, you know what? Just pick one grocery store and one drug store. That's really all you need. Uh, when I first started teaching couponing, I, that was kind of the number one complaint that I would get from folks is they were watching the TV shows of extreme couponing and they had this mindset that they needed to go all over town to find the best deals. That is definitely how the TV show made you feel. Um, and I, I don't want to make you feel that way, but I will say that right now, if you're trying to keep your grocery budget as low as possible, broadening past one grocery store uh, and maybe even changing up where you're getting some other things is going to significantly help. Um, so for me, I do a lot of my shopping with Publix buy one get ones. I do a chunk of our shopping with Lowe's Foods clearance, though I had a blast with the Lowe's Foods gas rewards deal that they ran all of December. Uh, I mean, literally, um, well, we ended up paying, I think, uh, $1.50 
for an entire tank of gas because it doesn't just let you make it free. You had to pay like 10 cents a gallon. Um, but hey, I know I guess it was more like $2 at 10 cents a gallon because we totally filled up. But normally, most of our food's coming from Publix. Clearance deals are coming from Lowe's Foods. That is produce and meat, uh, mostly, is what we're hitting in Lowe's Foods. Uh, and then household items, I've been getting from a couple different places. Sometimes household is drugstores. Drugstores are run really great deal on paper goods, some really great deals on detergent. But sometimes household is online as well. So we have a lot of Amazon subscribe and save when they're running coupons on top of subscribe and save discounts. And you can stack those, you know, a 40% off and a 15% subscribe and save makes for a pretty sweet deal on detergent uh, and other items. So hitting those Amazon coupon deals with subscribe and save that has become a chunk of our household um, and then drug stores for personal care. So while all that sound may sound crazy, in the past, I would have maybe said, hey, you'll be fine at Publix and one drugstore. So now for me, it's Publix, clearance deals at a different store. Publix doesn't run clearance deals. I can't find those there. They don't exist across the chain. You will not find clearance. And when I mean that, I don't mean like Christmas clearance that's pulled over into a corner. I mean like meat and produce and bread. It doesn't exist but it does in other stores. So for me, Publix is my main store. Then I got my clearance backup store in Lowe's Foods. Drugstore is great for your personal care items and some household baby care as well coming from a drugstore. And then hitting those online deals with subscribe and save, which also have some really good baby deals too if you're in diaper mode. Um, so it's not where I would have loved to have said, oh, this is really simple. It can be, and you can definitely knock out all your shopping in Publix or all your shopping in Harris Teeter, but sometimes broadening to that second store gives you some availability that the other store didn't have. So clearance in my book for hitting that second store. Uh, Lowe's Foods does run a lot of gas rewards offers. Whoever puts out those gas rewards offers doesn't do math, uh, and that is in our favor. So they had so many freebies through the month of December that you paid for them in the store, but you got more than the value of them back in gas savings. Like, I will take them. Uh, I'm happy with that. So taking advantage of those promotions in that second store is giving you so much more of, of sale items and options in sale items than just one store is gonna give you. Uh, now, those of you who have been with me for a while, you know that Aldi wasn't in my list there. I'm willing to give you guys Aldi. I'm not gonna take away your Aldi and your Lidl, but I would encourage you to still be willing to hit a major grocery store along with your Aldi and your Lidl. You will lower your grocery budget to get out of Aldi exclusively and shop your grocery deals that you know are cheaper. And then for the things that you know are not cheaper, head to Aldi. Make Aldi, make Lidl your price book. So I'm not telling you you have to give it up but I encourage you to be willing to acknowledge that there are cheaper items in other stores with sales and coupons. Um, and then to head back to Aldi and Lidl for the things you couldn't find on sale. So again, still using that two grocery store model, uh, but it is gonna lower your max out of pocket. Now in that hitting two stores, you need to be really good at kind of saying we're done. Um, so for me, going into the store today, it was a, I only want to spend $50 in this store. Uh, and so it starts to be a, do I need hummus? Am I getting hummus because um, it's just on sale with a coupon? Or am I getting hummus because we need it? Uh, now, in my book, I'm trying to find healthy snacks that provide protein uh, and that even my husband will say, yes, this is a healthy snack because he um, just calls our pantry the carb closet and says that we don't have anything healthy, which um, probably don't have as much as we should. So, uh, you know, I did grab the hummus today. I feel like I can make a check mark on the healthy snack. Uh, but it does mean in other parts of the store that you may see a deal and you say, you know what? I don't have to have that. It is a deal, but it's still money out of your pocket, even if it's somewhat on sale, if it's not something you need, that you're putting it back. So you're still setting yourself a budget in that store, you can't stay under budget if you don't have a budget, right? Um, that doesn't work. So still making sure that you're limiting yourself to whatever that budget is for the week, even if it's a great clearance deal, 
you leave it there. If it's over budget, uh, needs to be the mindset that you go into the store with. Because if you just go into the store with a, I'm gonna buy every red tag I see throughout Lowe's Foods, you're still gonna spend a lot of money. Uh, you gotta have a way to tone it down a little bit. And going in with that mindset of how much you're willing to spend or how much is left in your weekly budget is a really good way for you to stop and say, wait a second, do I even need this? Will we even eat it? Uh, you know, is it gonna get lost in the freezer when I get home? Um, then maybe I don't wanna grab this clearance item. And hopefully that'll help you stay in budget a little bit better too. Okay, um, let's see. So, oh, and um, Donna, I'm actually talking about Lowe's Foods. Sorry, I don't always add the foods onto the end. I, I said that today um, with my husband in the car. We were in a little tiny town, and he was like, there's a Lowe's here? I'm like, no, no, a Lowe's Foods. Um, that is what we're talking about in terms of just great clearance deals. There are a lot of stores that run really great clearance deals, though. So not just Lowe's Foods. Uh, you will find Kroger, a, a lot of grocery stores offer really great clearance, just not Publix. They don't, period. So what I would recommend is heading into your local store and saying, hey, do you offer clearance? And is there a particular day that you mark down your clearance items so that I can be here when you do that? Uh, sometimes they'll say, well, it's by department. Then just ask those departments. Ask somebody in the produce section and someone in the meat section, hey, when do you normally find that you do a lot of markdowns. Is it one particular day of the week? A lot of times those markdown days um, will be based on the store sale ad. So if they've got chicken on sale, they're gonna put all that new chicken, new tagged chicken on the shelf the first day of the sale. So towards the end of the sale or right before the next sale starts, that's when you're gonna start to see all of that markdown. So be ready for them to give you that as their answer. But that's really what you're looking for is um, what is the best store for clearance and when is that clearance happening in your store? Um, Hing's even saying she has an amazing Aldi that marks down meat half price all the time. Um, she runs in an opening when she's off um, to take advantage of those half prices. You'll find even half price clearance at Sam's, guys. Uh, Costco, they, they do markdowns as well. So catching those markdowns on their particular days um, or what time they're doing it, whether it's the beginning of the day or the end of the day, so you can stock up always a key way of saving on all of these things. Um, okay, so we, we've hit a lot tonight uh, for sure as we go through. Um, and in talking about staying on budget and having a grocery budget, I saw some people say that ours was uh, you know, a, a great number. What I would encourage for you if you don't have a grocery budget and you want to make one, is first you need to figure out what you spent on groceries. I do not recommend that you look at December. Uh, December is a bad month to make it a new grocery budget off of, or else you're gonna be like, woo, we have all the money in the world. You don't. You spent way too much on groceries in December. Like 95% of America spends way too much on groceries in December. So what I would encourage you to do is you know, grab your bank account, grab whatever you use, and look at your September statement. And then look at, okay, here are my grocery, you know, I was in Aldi, I was in Publix, wherever it was. Figure out how much you spent in September. It is a, a holiday-free month. Labor Day, hopefully, didn't cost you a ton of money. And then let's see how we could cut that for January and on. Were you couponing and trying to hunt sales in September? If so, then maybe you just try to cut a little bit from January. If you were doing nothing in September, you weren't, even focused on trying to save money in September, then let's make a big goal. Hey, let's cut 30% off of September. That would be a big goal. I am not telling you let's cut 50% um, on your first month. That's really stressful. You probably don't have uh, a stockpile of what's been on sale. You're gonna start fresh with what's on sale right now, buying six weeks of what's on sale each week, and that's gonna take you a little bit of time. So don't go whole hog, we're cutting the budget in half and you're starving until the next month. Um, that's not how anybody wants to run the grocery budget. But do try to give yourself a good goal, 30%, maybe even 25% if 30% sounds too scary, off of what you spent in September as your goal for January. Uh, if this seems crazy to you, you can pull up your bank account and look at past statements. I can guarantee you they're in there. So I'm not telling you to like go dig in the corners of your bedroom for past statements. 
It's all online. Just download your September statements, figure out where you spent your money grocery wise and go from there uh, to give yourself an idea of what to spend in January. If you can do it, then make February a little harder. If it was spot on, then perfect. You've got a goal going forward of where you want your grocery budget to be. Um, January is a really great month for saving on health foods. So if you're in a health kick, you're going to find a lot of buy one, get ones and a lot of promotions on health foods. But I'll warn you after January, you aren't going to find those health foods. And I don't mean hummus. I mean like our keto and our Atkins bars, they do go on sale, but not usually as often as we see in January. So, uh, just remember to get enough to at least get you through February, maybe even on into March, uh, on some of those items that are really uh, beginning of the year, New Year's resolution items. Everything else in the grocery store, like clockwork, every six weeks coming back on sale. So you just need to get into that habit and you are gonna be very, very set in terms of following sales, buying them, stocking up on them, and then not needing anything until it's back on sale again. Okay. Um, next week we're going to go through mobile apps. So we hit Ibotta briefly there for a second. Um, and in terms of talking mobile apps, I you know, didn't really even go through a lot of how this works. I just kind of showed you what it was. Um, but I would encourage you if you're brand new to at least go ahead and download the Ibotta app. Ibotta is free and Ibotta works at a ton of stores in your area. So this is just my area. It knows where I am, um, though I don't have a Rite Aid anywhere near me. Um, but you get the idea of everything that's there just in my neck of the woods. So just create an account. If you don't already have it, start to play with it. There's hundreds of offers in Ibotta. And then you can sit here and start to use one or two of them as you go to the store. Um, you will find there's a lot of things in there that are on sale. So load them. And then at the bottom, you can see this big blue bar that says submit receipt. And it's going to walk you through how to take a picture of your receipt. It's really, really easy. But I would encourage you, if you're brand new, to play with it this week. Buy one thing that's in the app. Next week, we'll talk about it even more. But if you've at least used it once, it's going to make so much more sense versus me just explaining it to you and you've never seen it before in your life. So I would start with Ibotta. We'll move on to some other apps too next week. When I mentioned at the beginning today that there are not a lot of printable coupons anymore, this is why. There are tons of mobile apps. Uh, Ibotta is the biggest. Fetch is another one. We'll go through a lot of them um, just so you kind of know how they work so you're not missing the offers. They are all matched in on your grocery lists on Southern Savers. So if you do want to just get started by using the lists that are on Southern Savers, again, you're going to go to the top of the site. You're going to pick the grocery store you want to go to, and then you're going to see all the current deals at that store. Uh, there's multiple lists here. This is Publix. Tomorrow I'll have the unadvertised list up. I'm almost done typing it and couponing it. Um, so you have a lot of things to pick from, but all the coupons that we know of are right there for those items, uh, whether they're mobile apps, whether they're printables or insert coupons, you can make your shopping list and head to the store. So some ways to get started this week if you're just getting back into it or if you're brand new, uh, and then next week we'll dive in and add in some more mobile apps and hopefully some more savings for you guys too. Um, so we'll go through the basics for the next few weeks. Um, mobile apps next week, we're going to hit drug stores the week after that and just try to get us all back onto kind of the biggest uh, ways of saving in uh, the grocery store, the drug stores that we're saving the most on our budgets. Keep in mind when I say that we spend about 120 a week, that's shopping drugstore deals and shopping grocery deals on top of that. So you do want to put those stores together. You don't want to just be focused on, um, uh, you know, I, oh, I'll just do the grocery deals or I'll just do the drugstore deals. You're missing the other half of the equation. You need them together uh, to really be able to make your budget work. So just so you kind of see that, you know, the big picture, I don't shop Every day, I promise, uh, I live 30 minutes from any store, so I'm really in the grocery store once a week, and I'm in the drug stores once a week. Um, so this doesn't have to become your new lifestyle, but by shopping grocery stores for your groceries, drug stores for your household and your personal care, you're gonna save a chunk 
off of your regular grocery expenses. I promise. Um, uh, and you know, while you're turning over a new leaf, this is also a great time to turn it over with a friend. So encouraging a friend to join in with you as you try to get better at your groceries, um, and your couponing or however you want to name it doesn't really involve scissors though. You can still get inserts. I, um, grabbed mine. So these are mine that just came in the mail. We did get four inserts this past Sunday. There's still going to be a chunk of inserts in this coming Sunday as well. Um, there's just not as many as there used to be. Uh, also a little heads up here. This is the last and final brand saver. We're not going to have once a month brand saver inserts ever again. I don't know. Laminate it if you need to, um, for posterity sake. Great. So these are going to start to be in the other inserts, um, on an occasional basis, but no longer standalone PNG inserts, uh, as of last week. So if you did get Sunday's paper, yesterday's paper, great. If you didn't, there's potential, you can still find them around town. There were four inserts in yesterday's paper. So it's a good time to get started. That's a great, just influx of new coupons to get you going. Um, but on a regular basis, it might be that you kind of decide off and on, you know, I think I'm going to get a paper this weekend, or I'm going to skip next weekend, uh, kind of making your decision as you go. We do post those previews on Southern Savers every single week. So if you head over to the site and click the Sunday ads blue button, um, that's right on the sidebar, you will see the preview for each week. Um, and you can click on it and get a very clear idea of all of the coupons that will be in that week's paper. So you can decide, do I want to get a paper this week or do I not want to get a paper this week? It makes it very simple for you. Um, but papers are not a requirement. I'd say anymore. Printable coupons also not really that popular anymore either. It's mobile apps. It's digital coupons that are in your store. So you're going to be using your phone. Uh, you can definitely load a lot of these online too. And we're going to talk about all of that next week. So, um, hopefully that's going to help. Um, oh, and my mom is chiming in. My mom helps me maintain the database and inserts all the, puts all the insert coupons in the database for me. Um, so she's chiming in that this coming Sunday, we will have a Unilever insert, um, in the Sunday paper. So this one's PNG, but we do get other, um, booklets that are other specific whole brands. So Unilever will be in this coming Sunday. Okay. Um, let's see. Let, um, uh, oh, is unadvertised good for all regions? So Wendy, it should be, the, um, I, years ago you went with my unadvertised list and Publix didn't have the items on sale. So the buy one, get ones should definitely be buy one, get one in all areas for Publix and for even the unadvertised list of for Lowe's Foods and for Kroger. Um, the other unadvertised deals that are down in the grocery or the household section should also be. So when we're talking unadvertised deals, these are ones that have tags on them. They're not ones that um, are just kind of sitting there with no tag. And I'll show you what I mean by that. This is all of my pictures for today. So you'll notice... Um, these all have, you know, big tags in front of them. This isn't just me randomly taking pictures of them. Um, what it can be is potentially that, you know, where you're living, the start date could be different than the start date in my store. The prices will definitely differ. So if you look like when I pulled up Peter Pan earlier, the Peter Pan price in the Publix corporate weekly ad was buy one, get one at $4.99. Uh, that was not the case in my store. That was buy one, get one at $3.13, which is way cheaper uh, than what was in that corporate Publix ad. Now, it could, it will still be buy one, get one in your store. Is it as cheap as $3.13? Potentially not. Depends on where you live. Uh, more expensive areas are going to have more expensive prices. So that can also be a little bit of a difference. Maybe it's not on the buy one, get one, but it's just a cost of living adjustment basically is what those stores are given. Um, so folks that live in Florida, folks that live in vacation areas, you already know this, you've learned that your groceries are even more expensive than the rest of us. Um, but most of these items should still hold no matter where you live on those unadvertised lists. Um, okay. Um, and why, oh, making for, I'm guessing your question is why is PNG getting rid of their inserts? Um, honestly, I, I chalk this up to just 
who PNG is. I think that they would have loved to have trashed these inserts years ago. Um, they're one of the most difficult companies for coupon redemption. They're one of the biggest companies to tell the stores, nope, we think that those were illegitimately used. We're not going to reimburse you for them, even though they were um, actual legitimate coupons. So I think there's probably even some stores that are like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Um, we're so glad. We wished this would have happened years ago as well. Um, it's just kind of the hard nose um, way that PNG is. So I think we're still going to see a lot of these offers. What they're going to do is start to put out more and more that are store digital, which they're already doing. So Walgreens, CVS, Publix, Kroger, you're going to log in and find all of these offers as digital coupons for that store. So they're going to put more of a focus on digital. They are going to still put some in, in the other inserts, just not as many in as printed coupons. Um, and I, I don't think it's the cost of printing. I think it's just who PNG is. Um, uh, Nadine's chiming in and saying she used to get four newspapers and cut back to two. It's just not worth it. And I agree, Nadine, I would say that as well. Um, uh, I don't use nearly as many as I used to either. Um, so it is kind of a, are we using enough to warrant getting these every single week? And that's a good question. It's something that you're going to need to kind of keep tabs up for yourself so that, I mean, obviously the goal is to stay under budget and that needs to include the cost of your coupons too. So you're not spending things on, uh, things you're not using. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop there for tonight. We had a lot of things tonight. I'll be back on tomorrow uh, at two, Tuesday at two for all of the top deals that are running in CVS and Walgreens this week. Um, there are some pretty good deals. Uh, and for those of you who maybe don't make it, I'm just going to give you a little tiny preview of a fun money maker uh, really fast. So if you are in CVS, this is the type of what we talk about every Tuesday. Uh, I encourage you to head to CVS tomorrow and look for this. My store literally had them in a basket and this basket is full. These are ponds, um, dark spot removers. They're buy one, get one half price at $1.30, which means the second one is 65 cents. So grab two of them. That is $1.95. You're going to get back $3 in CVS rewards. So that is a little tiny sneak peek of what the drugstore deals look like. They're not all money makers, but when you run into deals like this, you buy them. Even if you don't need dark spot remover, uh, this is a $1 money maker. You spent $1.95 and you got $3 back for purchasing it. So we'll cover that one and all the other deals that are running in CVS and Walgreens. Walgreens has a whole new batch of month long deals that all started yesterday. Um, so join me if you can. If you can't join me live at two o'clock, you can always watch it after the fact on Facebook and on YouTube. So hopefully I will see you guys there. Um, and if you've ever got questions, feel free to send me a Facebook message or an email, Jenny at southernsavers.com. I'm glad to answer any questions as you get back into couponing or you, uh, you know, decide to just stick to it uh, even more as we get into the new year. So send those questions away and hopefully I will catch you uh, on any of the videos that we do or we'll gladly answer your question at a 